everyone, I'm Mitch Durfee. I'm here with my great friend and investment partner, Chris Kelly. Glad to be here. So well, all we want to do today is basically break down as many limiting beliefs and add as much value to your investment career as possible. I know the hardest thing about it is getting started, and that's why I got Chris Kelly here with me today. He's going to run through a few different things, and I'm honestly, I'm just going to interview him for you guys and add as much value to you guys as possible. So again, Chris, thanks for being here. And uh, the first question I have for you is, how long have you been doing this? Amazingly enough, I've only been doing this really realistically for like 15 years, but I've only really made my most wealth gains within the last three. In three years. It is not a 1980s world anymore, and that's one of the big things that it took me forever to figure out. 80%, 90% of all of the books out there mm. are save your money until you're 65 years old and then retire rich and retire happy and that's not the life that anybody wants. Who wants to work for 45, 50 years yeah. and then retire and then get to enjoy their life? Nobody, I, right? I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I think honestly that was the thing that made me get into real estate investing was I was working so many hours and I think we call this millionaire math, right? Yeah. It's the kind of thing you're probably gonna jump into for these guys. But I realized that the more hours I worked only meant that I was gonna make a marginal increase in my salary. And if I ever stopped working, then that, mean, that meant that my salary or income was gone forever. Um, so again, you know, when it comes back to real estate, it's kind of a stream of income that's always flowing. And, and there's so many things that you can do to create it and, and systemize it so that it runs forever. So hopefully we can share a few of those things with you guys today. Um, so if, if you're breaking it down, what's, what was probably the first thing uh, that, that got you into real estate investing? What, what made you want to do it? Well, going back to the 15 years of investing, the thing that always made me want to do it is I always looked at my bank account and I never see, saw it actually growing. Hmm. Like I did CDs when I was you know, 15 years old when CDs were like 2% and sure. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> now they're like a fraction of a percent. Yeah. I did double E bonds, I did REITs, I did mutual funds, I did stocks. Mm -hmm. Nothing made money like real estate makes money. Yeah. And it took a good mentor and an aha moment after reading Rich Dad Poor Dad to make me realize that there's such a better way and that my mentality of actually making money wasn't there. Yeah. I was thinking like a 1980s person when that's not the world that we're living in anymore. Yeah. And so I had to adapt to the new systems today if I wanted to even be a competitor in the market. For sure. So I'm sure a lot of the viewers, people that are watching this video can probably relate to what I also felt like and was told. And I'm sure how many of you guys out there or you know that are watching this video right now have been told that get a steady job, work there for 20, 30 years and, and retire. How many of your family and friends, you know, that's what they're doing. Um, and, and you know differently, that's why you're actually here, that you know that there's gotta be another way to create an income stream for you guys. Like like for me personally, I know, I mean, my dad, I love him to death, my, my mom, my grandparents, you know, they all work these great careers and, and, they're, and I always hear them talking about it, like, oh, I'll be able to retire here and, and shortly and stuff like that. And, and honestly, like real estate has created just a, a, a stream of income for me that makes it possible that I honestly, if I stopped working, that that income is there. And, and you know, the more I do it, the longer that I'm doing this, it just, it makes it so much easier to be able to travel and do things that I want to do. So even if it just frees up your time, like imagine how much value is there. Right. Uh, just to have an extra hour a week, you know, if you buy one property and you free up another thousand dollars a month, like that's, you know, for a lot of people out there, that's 40, 50 hours of working that you don't have to do anymore because you own a, a rental property. And so. to take it even a step further, your characteristics that you have currently are only be going to be accentuated with money. If you have fun, mm -hmm. you're going to have so much more fun with money. Yeah. If you are adventurous, think of all the adventures you can have if you actually have the opportunity to have money. Yeah, true. Uh, one of my good friends and also again, another guy that I coach constantly is uh, Max Costas and he's always mentioning fun coupons. So every time he gets a, another income or a check at the end of the month, he, go, he calls them fun coupons. And, I'm, and I think it's hilarious that the guy's traveling. In fact, actually this month uh, in October, he's got a ticket around the world. For the next six months, this guy's traveling around the world because of these fun coupons that he was able to create through uh, income. It's just, it's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. 
So I also read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I think that anyone out there that is watching this uh, should definitely pick up that book if you haven't already because it really does break it down between you know two, the two types of people that are in this world. Yeah. People that are working the jobs and getting the raises, the 10 cent, 50 cent, $2 raise, you know, been there for five years and they look down the line and you see someone there and you're like, Oh yeah, you know if I if I stay in this company for the next twenty years, you know I could be like uh, George down here, and I could get a two dollar raise and uh, more hours. Uh, but in, in real estate, you know if you put those extra ten hours in on the weekend, like like Chris and I, we, we love meeting up and traveling around the country. Absolutely. And it's it's not it's a great time. Like you know about a month ago we went down to Mass and we looked at uh you want to talk talk about that deal? The uh, we actually ended up spending what was it, like eight, nine hours looking at all around Boston, and we were looking at these smaller, like $300,000 deals. Yeah. And we're like, ah, oh, whatever. It's nothing that surprises us until we ended up seeing like a $1 million property, and we're like, this is where we want to be. This is perfect. Yeah. And the funny thing about these deals are we found that same, you know, there's another Aplex, and we yeah. found that Aplex the same way that we actually look for all of our other deals, which is, you know, on Craigslist or, you know, for sale by owners. Um, or you know, rent to owns these these secret terms that a lot of other investors aren't really going to share with you guys. And it's it's funny that you know we were working with a realtor all day down there in the area to kind of discover the area, and then when we went back to what our tried and true methods are, you know, right. the way that we find all these other great investments, like we were able to stumble upon, you know, twenty minutes. Yeah, in twenty minutes. And also when we met with a guy, um, you know, how much money did he knock off for a fifteen minute conversation that you know just through our negotiating techniques. Was it like fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah, fifteen thousand on one property, and then he had two properties, and he knocked off a hundred thousand right. dollars. Honest, because we were ready to buy his entire portfolio. Uh, two of the properties didn't really match up with what our niche market is and the things that we do. Um, although we, you know, for that hundred thousand dollar gap on this his portfolio, and it's just through negotiating, and we use seven words to to make that happen. And it's is that the best you can do? And, and if you use those when you're, when you're negotiating your properties, I think that that's something that you're going to find. Let them negotiate against their self. So that's like, well, another tip that I want to share with those guys. What, exactly. What's another tip for you? Like, the one that I always like is I make them give the first offer because that is the starting point. Usually what will happen is they will say, okay, I want this price and I'm willing to go this low. And they'll usually say, I want to start at this low number. Mm. And that's exactly where you want to start. Yeah, that's how you're going to get the best deals. Because uh, you know, when you're, when it comes to real estate investing, um, and I'm sure Chris will also will mention this too, you don't really make money on the long term, the hold, the appreciation. I mean, you do, right? That's the second part. That's the compound interest part, the part that just adds value uh, cons can consistently. consistently throughout the life of the the investment. Um, you get the appreciation towards the end, but really where you make all the money is on the buy side, exactly. right? You know, if you're knocking off 50,000 or 100,000, well, you can also take that right back to the bank and, and get what we, as a HELOC, yep. right? So you can buy an asset below market value, go to the bank, get more funding right back out of it and, and buy another property and just, it just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks. To so, even expand on that, you can buy a property, force appreciate it, do a cash out refi, and take out all the money that you've actually appreciated. That's only, we've only yeah. mentioned two strategies and there's handfuls That's crazy. that you can utilize. It's knowing the secrets, understanding the language. Yeah. And a bank will not take you seriously if you do not know the language. Investors sure. will not take you seriously unless you know the language. And another kind of big tip is find investors and be very very humble yeah like, that's true if you go to them and you act cocky and you're like i got this amazing thing and then they ask you what's your cash on cash and you go blank and you don't know the formulas and you don't know the ideas around it nobody's going to take you seriously but if you go there and be humble and you're like help me out i'm here to learn I have yet to find one investor who isn't willing to help out in some manner. That's true. It, you know, I think that, you know, diving into that, there is a very tight niche of people that are doing it. And sometimes you, you will find, you know, not to, not to fight against you on this one, but you will find some investors are very like, they're not willing to open the book, share any secrets and stuff like that. But the, the community, the people that, you know, so when they find a deal, you know, they want to make sure that they don't lose it to another person. Uh, but at the same time, like if you're if you lead with you know humility and you're you're vulnerable and you say hey listen just teach me I don't understand what I'm doing, 
Uh, honestly, you know, once a week, every every single week, I always try to add people to my network. So I'll reach out to them and say, hey, listen, this is who I am. This is where I'm at currently. If there's anything I can do to help you understand what I'm doing, then I share it with them. And, and the reason I do that is because, you know, if I'm able to share some of the great secrets that work with me, then others are also willing to share too. And, and that's what's brought me so far ahead in this real estate game in the last couple of years. I mean, like you said, right, you've been doing it for 15 years. And I personally, you know, I bought my first one back in 2007. So 10 years I've been doing this. And it wasn't until like the last two or three years that I figured out these secrets. And it's like, it, it's almost stupid how easy it is with the rates that are, they're so low right now. Like, you know, when the I bought- The lowest in history. It's, it's, if, if you're not in real estate right now and you're missing out on this almost free money. I mean, if you're talking about a 6% return, 8%, 10, and some of our properties that we bought together have, you know what, 12%? No, 12% um, return, 5% mortgage. Yeah. It, it makes amazing sense and it's almost silly to not be in this market. So 7% return on someone else's money. I mean, that, that's crazy to me. That's crazy. And the rates are only going to go up. Yep. So it you have to get into the business now. So if you're not into real estate, and I think uh, going back, and I think this is something that maybe you have a story or two talking about how you first decided to do it. We talked about that, like, you know, that your richest friends. And actually, I was walking into uh, the post office today. And as I was walking in, uh, my friend was walking out and he was telling me how he's like, look, I have a lot of friends and the, all the ones that, you know, all my friends, parents and stuff like that, the ones that are filthy rich and never worry about money, never worried about anything. Every one of them owned real estate and all the other parents that are worrying about, you know, the paycheck, you know, paying for their lights or, or paying for a vacation once a year, they don't own real estate. And I don't know if that has anything to cor that any correlation between the two, but you know, personally I take it as you got to get into real estate. And again, we're just average guys, which yeah. I think is like the, the, the funniest thing. Like you're always seeing these videos and right, you know, this isn't like this big mansion, the studio that we're just, we're here sharing information that's helped us by my, my me personally, $2 million with the real estate in the last, you know, 16 months. And, and Chris, you know, if you mind sharing. 1.2. 1.2. And, and again, how long did it take you to get that? Oh man, it took me 15 years to save up. Yeah. And then once I got that uh, certain chunk of money, I think in the last 18 months, I probably bought a million dollars worth of property. Yeah, so a million dollars worth of property in 18 months, which is again, like it, once you understand the formula and we're talking about, we're gonna share as many of these secrets with you guys as possible so that you guys can do it. What I really wanna do for you guys is I literally wanna give you every step. I mean, Chris talked about key terms. So if, if key terms are a great value to you, then send us a message and we'll get you guys, we'll get you some resources on these key terms for real estate. Because again, we're here to make sure that you guys have as much value when it comes to real estate investing, because if you're not doing it, we're, we're obligated. I feel personally, I personally feel obligated to share as many secrets as possible with you guys, because I wish someone did that for me when I was 23. And I'm sure you felt the same way, like, a, you know, 15 years ago, I wish, I'm sure you're like, I wish someone just taught me how to bridge this gap early on. And that's why it's so important for us to share this stuff with you guys. Absolutely. Rich dad. I didn't have access to a rich dad. I had, didn't have the access to someone who told me this is how you can make money. Yeah. I mean, there's this weird culture today to where money is evil. You don't talk about money and that's not the mentality that needs to happen in today's society. People need to talk about money. You need to be able to talk to people in order to create wealth. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I wrote a book, it's called Serve to Win. It's, it's a national number one bestseller. If you guys haven't picked it up, I encourage you guys to get it. But one of the steps that's in that book is networking. Uh, when I returned from Afghanistan, I had maybe five people that were in my, my personal group, like my parents and, and maybe two or three other friends. So I knew no one. So going back to this like 36 months ago when I came back from Afghanistan, zero network uh, and, and literally like a couple of real estate, I had a couple of real estate purchases and it took me, you know, about 12 months before I figured it out. You know, I started studying, I was reading a book a week. And then I literally discovered that my network was honestly everything I needed in order to get to where I wanted to be. Uh, if I, if I, I was never going to be a doctor, I was never going to be a chiropractor or a dentist or, or any of these high paying careers. So the only way for me to marginally get close to what they were making was for me to just buy a property and buy another property and buy another property. Now the beauty is, uh, unless they're selling their practice or the, you know, some other dentist comes in and takes over for them, like that's it. When they leave, you know, they get their retirement. For me, my, my real estate will keep stacking and stacking and stacking. Well, they're working 60 hours a week yeah. and having to deal with nurses, having to deal with people puking on them sure. and medicine and having to constantly renew their license or yeah. 
you know, relearn all the latest medication, real estate stays the same. The formulas stay the same. Yeah. I mean, plus the math is not that hard. It's algebra, <laughs> algebra, high school grade math. It's not complicated. It's easy to learn. Anyone can learn it. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So going back to that uh, when you were younger and the, the best advice that you possibly could have received, what would you say the best advice? Like, hey, listen, you know, I wish someone taught me X. What would that be? Kind of going back to the rich dad story, I wish that I had someone who was a real estate investor who said, do not waste your time, do not waste your efforts, do not waste your money on things that do not make you money. Hmm. I wish that someone was able to tell me, hey, I see that you've got $10,000 that you've saved up. Why don't you do this? That's because, cool. I mean, just in my lifetime, we've had the 2008 crisis. I was living down in Florida at the time. I could have made so much money if I just <laughs> had the right information. Yeah, that's true. That's and, true. you know, when the markets pull back, that's when you get greedy. And I didn't realize that. I thought the entire world was falling apart. And the smart people said, this is the most uh, amazing opportunity in America today, and at least for the next three or four years. The people who have made the most money invested during that time period yeah. and well what I was doing is I was in stock mm. and you know I was one of the smart ones and I didn't take all my money out sure I kept my money in and I kept investing and that was the most money I've made ever yeah and I wish again that I just had someone who was able to tell me these secrets and tell me you know here's where you need to allocate your money in order to get the best returns sure. So, so it, um, for me also, like I was in mutual funds and I was getting, you know, three, four, five, six percent. Which is amazing. Yeah, which was great. You know, I was super happy about that at the time. If you don't lose your money, yeah. you're doing well. Yeah, and, and for a short time and period, it was great. And luckily, I bought my first house in 2007, uh, you know, right before everything started to tank. But I had no intention of getting out of it. So, right, the real estate's still there. I still own that same property. And, and you know, just like in stocks, you know, as long as you're holding it through these dips and valleys, you're fine. But long term, you know, so 2000, that's 10 years and another 20 years, this entire asset's paid off. So Jay Cummings, a great friend of mine, you know, he always tells me, you know, there's always something I always hear him talking about when he's coaching and consulting other businesses. He's, he's always like, you know, five years from now, you're going to wish you started today. And the same things in real estate, right? You know, if you don't start immediately, well, first two things happen, right? Most people always fail because they never start or they fail because when they get almost close to getting there, they actually quit. But again, you know, so five years from now, you're gonna wish you started today. So if there's anything else that we can do to make sure that you guys have those tools and resources available to you guys, then definitely, definitely feel free to reach out to us because we're here for you guys. Uh, is there any other things in closing that you wanna share with these guys? Like, I'm sure you got some things that you wanna to talk to them about. I have tons to talk about, but probably the biggest thing that I would say is that every major investor I've ever met has always said they wish that they started younger and they wish that they went bigger. Yeah. That I'm a big believer in the domino effect. Every domino has the ability to knock over the next domino that's 40% bigger. Yeah, it's true. And the, the bigger of a domino you have that's your starting domino, I mean, exponential growth, mm. just knocking down the next domino. So. Go big on what makes you money. Yeah. Everybody says be super conservative, spread your money out. Diversify. Diversify, diversify as much as you can. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> but if something makes you money and if it's you working. know the math, yeah. you know the market, you know the systems, yeah. go all in and make money. Don't care about what everybody else says. If it works for you and it makes sense, have it work to the best of its ability and make money. So one of the, the things that I also find is uh, there's a lot of uh, concern or questions around what if I don't have any money? Like what, what would you do if I have if you have no money, no real estate started? Uh, you know what's what's kind of the step to bridge that gap? That I'm glad you asked that because that's actually one of the biggest misconceptions in the world. Yeah. If somebody came to me and they said I have this amazing deal and no money, right? I would fund it. I mean the same. Thing would happen if I saw a multi, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollar property. I don't have five million dollars just sitting around. Right. I guarantee you that if it was a deal, I could find that money. Um, yeah. I mean, the nice thing about 
the real estate market is that there's a lot of old money and there's a lot of money just sitting around not making any kind of decent returns because Absolutely. of the banks. And so that's so much collateral that has the ability to be um, moved and utilized if you're able to say, I can make you X amount and that's so much better than the bank. So true. Why not yeah. utilize my, <laughs> why not utilize me and have me make you more money? Right. I guarantee you, I could find that money, no problem 100%. at all. 100%. If I had zero dollars. Right now, starting with zero. If I started with absolutely nothing, I guarantee you, I could totally. probably do another million in 18 months if I found the right property. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. And it's funny, because like, you know, when I first heard that, like, oh, bring me a deal, you know, it's never really a cash uh, issue. Um, or it's never really in my, the other words I use is it's never really a resor resource issue. It's not, it's not about how many resources or fun coupons as Max would say that you have. It's about being resourceful. So again, like if I had zero dollars, I just spent it all on one property and, and I'm literally cash poor right now. If the right deal came around, if you guys had the right deal and you brought that to investors or brought that to someone, they're like, they're going to incentivize you to bring more deals back to them. It's a, it's crazy not to, right? If you bring me a deal that's making money, you know, I'll cut you in on it because again, at the end of the day, like the more deals you can find, well, it just works. It's smart business to, you know, to not, you know, the roots are where the fruits grow from. So if you guys are great roots and we're burning in deals and stuff like that, and you're trying to find out how to get started in this business, that's where you start. I mean, find a deal, get used to it, get know the market, know what's making money, manage it, right? Yeah. You know, find the deal, offer to manage it, because you can always bring three things, right? You can bring the deal, you can bring cash, or you can bring the sweat. Uh, so there's always something that you can do to get get started in this business. And honestly, um, you know, there's like for me, if I was starting like where you guys are at today, the first thing I would do is I would meet with a bank. I would just just go talk to a bank and just say, hey, listen, here's what I want to do. Um, and just say, I'm thinking about buying an income generating property or an investment property and just let them take a look at your credit score. You know, it's not going to hurt you too bad, but they're going to tell you whether or not the position that you're in is, is actually financeable, right? So if you can actually get a deal, um, you know, the bank will pre-approve you is what the term is. And they'll tell you whether or not you're going to be able to buy an income property. And if not, you know, take it as a, take it as a grain of salt, ask them, what can you do in order to get set up? So in 12 months, you can do it. And again, during that 12 months doesn't mean that you can't buy something. It just means that you just have to get resourceful, right? Find someone that's willing to do the same thing. And, and the last thing that I want to talk about is, you know, if you don't have a group of people that are, um, I guess the term really with the thing is that I want to talk about is becoming the lighthouse, right? How do you get people to come to you with deals? Do you have a, do you have a secret for that or anything like that? I don't have a particular secret. I know that there's a ton of hustle that has to come with it because to find an uh, investment partner or an investment group outside of your social circle is sure. very difficult to, to even get in front of those people. Mm -hmm. So I would say keep hustling, let everybody know what you're trying to do, you know, let the universe know That's and it. the universe will return that to you. It's crazy. I mean, there's, there's uh, real estate investing clubs that you can go to. Um, I know a bunch of people who just fall into network connections when they're at a club or, yeah. or a golf course or something like that. But let everybody know and something somewhere will happen. Absolutely. And, and for me, you know, the way I always describe becoming the lighthouse is like, all right, if there isn't an investment network, well, that means there's probably a need for an investment network in the area. Right. So, so if there isn't one, then be the lighthouse, go out there and, you know, put up a sign at the coffee shop or say, Hey, listen, every Thursday we're meeting up. And I know I th and it's, it's funny. I say coffee shop, but I think that's actually how we met. Yeah. You know, we were talking, <laughs> we were talking about getting into real estate investing and I think we met and I didn't even have your phone number at the time, but then we met at an auction house yeah. and, and, and we ended up purchasing. You want to talk, you want to tell the story? Yeah. Purchasing the auction house. We ended up, uh, switching, Facebook accounts, <laughs> then we started working and then we're like, oh wait, we don't have each other's numbers. Yeah. So we didn't have each other's phone numbers when we bought an auction house and, and that auction house ended up, you know, when we bought that one, we did a HELOC on that, took yeah. that money, bought another house, flipped that one. How much did we make on that one? Oh man, I couldn't tell you the numbers, but I think we made $50,000. 50,000. Yeah. 50,000 on that one. And then we had another eight plex that we bought. Um, yeah. How much did we have to come out of pocket on that? Uh, with the HELOC, 
Nothing. Nothing. So we bought. So we were able to buy you know three properties together now, and and on the last property, which was a million dollar property, we came out of our pocket nothing from using the line of credit on some of our other properties. So again, guys, if you guys have questions, you know I definitely want you guys to reach out to us. We're one hundred percent here and available, and I encourage you guys to you know just kind of send us a message if you have questions or share this information with a friend. If you have you know if there's more things that we didn't cover then check out the members area and stuff like that because again, we're gonna give you guys as much content as possible. Anything else in closing, Chris? I, I could talk for hours and hours and hours. Awesome. I'm excited to see what this program has. Definitely. Guys, thank you so much. And uh, I'm Mitch Durfee. Thank you, Chris, for coming. Absolutely. Awesome. And we're here for you guys. Take care.